guys, welcome to Little Miss Keto. I'm Jackie, and today I'm going to show you how to make a lemon pound cake. I know switching to the keto diet, you're going to have a constant craving for sweets. I know I did. So, in order to help satisfy that craving without breaking your diet, let's make a keto pound cake. First, we're going to need a whole stick of cream cheese. Next, you will need a whole stick of butter, or a half cup of butter if you don't have the sticks. And you're going to need a cup and a half of your sugar-free sweetener of choice, whether it's monk fruit or swerve or whatever it is. I chose monk fruit. I just like the taste of it better. Two teaspoons of lemon extract, or if you don't like lemon, whatever flavor of extract you want. The recipe, the flavoring of the recipe is totally up to you. I'm just showing you how to make it lemon. And then a whole teaspoon of vanilla extract. And this part's gonna seem a little crazy, but you're gonna need eight large eggs. Now that we got all our ingredients in here, we just need to blend it up. If you have a hand mixer, it's fine, but I got my electric mixer. And you're going to want to mix it up until that you can't really see the chunks of cream cheese. Once you have the egg mixture looking not super chunky, you're going to want to get to our dry ingredients. We have two cups of almond flour. It is a great flour that is definitely keto and it has lots of nutrients and proteins in it. And it's gluten free. So we're going to have two cups. Here we have our baking powder. You're going to need two teaspoons of that. A fourth teaspoon of salt. I chose pink Himalayan because I've read it's better for you than normal sea salt or salt. And next up we have a fourth cup of coconut flour. It's going to add a little extra sweetness without adding actual sugar into it. And just like the almond flour, it's full of proteins and nutrients for you. So let's mix up, whisk it all together. So you can't see the baking powder anymore. You want to add it to your wet ingredients. Don't mix it, just use your spatula and go through it until you just moisten it. You don't want to mix it all the way. If it looks a little chunky, it's fine. It's kind of like making a pancake batter. After you're done mixing it, well, combining it, add it to a buttered or oiled loaf pan. This recipe makes enough for one loaf, so double up if you're making two. And add a bit of parchment paper with a little handle so it's easy to take out if you don't have a collapsible bottom. Try to even out the top, and then you're going to want to put it in a 325 degree oven Fahrenheit for an hour and 15 minutes. Around that time, check it and with a toothpick and see if it's ready. It might need a little longer or shorter depending on your oven. Well, once you have your cake out of the oven, let it cool down until it's about room temperature or hot enough that you won't burn yourself on it. And while you wait for that, let's make the icing. First, you're going to need three ounces of cream cheese. Half a teaspoon of lemon extract, or whatever extract of your choice. Two tablespoons of uh, sh alternative confectioner sugar, 
whether you use Swerve or a different brand is fine. And a third cup of heavy cream. Just throw it all into your mixer of choice and mix it until it's smooth, like proper frosting. You'll want your cream cheese to be room temperature, so pull it out a little bit before the, your cake's ready, so it has time to soften. That'll make making the frosting go a lot smoother. And if you think your frosting is too watery, add more confectioner sugar until it's done. Here it is, the finished pound cake. It's absolutely delicious, and it's only three net carbs per slice. And each cake can produce about 16 slices, depending on how thick you cut it. If you really want, to, if you prefer like it to be colder, put it in the fridge overnight and frost it in the morning, it'll be absolutely great.